<clears throat> in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, as the covering of this ministry, we, <laughs> not only trust the Lord, but we, we uh, tend to not lean on our own understanding, but we tend to, at times, expand into areas we may not have dreamed to expand into because we're letting God lead and doing as best we can to complete the devotional series of devotions every day while gradually transitioning to a different format, a different style, maybe a different venue that brings out a different kind of intimacy with Jesus. I was thinking this morning how I feel far from God at times this time of year because of the month of what we call Elul in Hebrew is a time of reflection where whether a person that's Jewish is uh, observant or not or whether they're religious or not or whether they're whatever they're doing somehow God connects the heart of every Jew together in some way and in some kind of Without them really knowing, he causes them to consider themselves and to consider and reflect during this time of year. And so, if you know a Jewish person and they're, they, they seem a little bit different right now, it's, it's okay. It's leading up to the holy days. It's leading up to Rosh Hashanah and, and uh, Feast of Trumpets and Yom Kippur and the Days of Awe and a time of genuine consideration of how they live their lives. And so there's kind of a kind of a step back time that they look at, kind of a reflection, a, a good time for all of us to examine our hearts before the Lord, you know, and to re-establish our connection with the Father in heaven. And so sometimes, you know, I just I find myself connected with a, a different brotherhood. It's not necessarily brotherhood of faith, but one of generational connection that, you know, my heritage draws me to and connects with me that, even as Paul said, that I would that all Israel would be saved, you know, and that though God sent him to the Gentile nations or the non-Jewish people, he likewise always had a heart that wanted to see his brethren saved. So... In that, I find myself melancholy a little in a happy way, and reflective in a humble way, and tenderized in a very dramatic way. But today I was thinking of a, a pastor I met a long time ago when he first arrived into a town that I was in, and he had such visions and was such a joyful, young man of God with a wife and kids that he, he sees the character he's a worship leader and his teaching was kind of eh, you know it's pretty good his gifting his literal anointing was in worship and when he was in that venue it was there was none like him but he wrote a song a long time ago that he sang in a different way that I really enjoyed and when uh, he sang it, it was always, you felt as though you were just transported out of this world into another place, another time, another venue that you may not know or feel comfortable with. And while I don't sing, I do worship the Lord. And I believe that when we set aside our preconceived ideas of sound and equipment and stages and worship leaders and all of our our format and style then god the living god comes in when you just burst forth in song and praise and adoration to your father from your heart not from your earbuds listening to music and doing like a sing-along or a whatever it may be but when you can close your eyes when you can focus the attention of your spirit on the unseen kingdom of his realm, as Barry McGuire once said, 
when you let yourself speak the words in limerick or song or as best you know how, did you know your father is blessed in it? Did you know that God and his angels listen to you? Did you know that it's more than being in the congregation of the mighty and offering up praise? But it's all about you, one-on-one -on -one with your Father, in worship, in spirit, and in truth. When I look to the land of God that was slain, and I know when we got in heaven, at the mention of his name, all the angels fall. Who am I to stand? Am I not to blame for the land that was slain? They cried, Worthy is the land of God that was slain, falling prostrate on their faces, giving praises to his name. Was it not for me he died? Am I now so numb in giving the same glory to God's only Son? Hallelujah to the man that was slain, that was slain. Hallelujah to the man that was slain. Was Are there not times when you feel the release of letting go some song you enjoy, knowing it expresses all that you feel inside for the one you love? Whenever you feel like that, don't be embarrassed, don't be ashamed. But sing out with all your heart, with all your passion, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all of your strength. And let it go to God with all your tears. And you'll find no fear from Him that He will accept the sacrifice of praise from you. See the Father. Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us, John 14, 8. My children, have I been so long time with you, coming to you, speaking to you, and yet you have not known the Father? Your Father is the God and controller of a mighty universe, but He is as I am. All the love and the strength and beauty you have seen in me are in my Father. If you see that and know him and me as we really are, then that suffices you. It's really all sufficient for you. It completes your life. It satisfies you. It is all you need. So see the Father. See me and it will suffice you. This is love in abundance. This is joy in abundance. This is all you need. And you know, when you have seen the Father, you really need nothing else. And the truth is, nothing else satisfies.